Supra. Andrew has a story to tell. I stole this AC condenser from some Supra outside. He just took it off a running Supra and slammed <laughs> it in here. <laughs> Mark is gonna talk today. Mark, what's under the hood? <laughs> He really just wants to swear and say something, but he's holding back, guys. Reinhardt single ways, R1s, but he got like the upgraded top hat with the solid pillow block in there, so it doesn't have like a rubber bush in there, rubber bushing or whatever would have been there. I believe that's what it was. Now it's just, it can pivot as the car moves up and down. Check these out. So these are gonna go on the back. That's one of the new upgrades going into Ben Supra. He comes with these little blankets to cover him up. I don't think he'll run those because he's not going off road. Those are more like to keep dust and dirt off when you're on the track. So Andrew's being extremely cautious, just installing every bit here. It's coming along slowly. We'll have more updates maybe in like a day or two. Mark, say something angry. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Been working on it a couple days. We didn't share it with you guys, but let me fill you in on what's happened. So last time you saw it, it came back from paint and we were probably dropping off maybe the engine, all the pieces at machine shop, engine supply to get some stuff worked on. But in the meantime, we went racing a couple times. We were really busy and we haven't touched Ben's car in a while because we were waiting on the stroker motor to be complete. We got the short block back. We took a day and we assembled the short block. It's now in the car. You guys have seen us do a lot of 2J stuff, so we just didn't share that with you guys. It's just a 2J going in the Supra. I know it's not just that, but you've seen it before, so here we are. This is a really cool engine package that he got. He has high compression, 3.4 liter, lightweight, rum beef C stroker crank, CP pistons, Carrillo rods. This is quite a heavy duty setup where he could easily push like 12, 1300 horsepower on this engine, but we're going for quicker spool and response. So he's got a Borg Warner EFR on here. We're shooting for around 850 to 900. This is a 9174 turbo. The most you're gonna make is in the 900s, like low 900s. That would create a lot of back pressure with the setup, so we probably would stop it around like, just to be safe, so he can use it on a regular basis. We're gonna shoot for like high eights or just around 900. We'll see how it goes with the turbo wheel speed. Anyways, since then we've mounted this ETS intercooler. Mark has been building some intercooler piping. It's coming out really clean. Super nice setup here. He has the Powerhouse Racing S23 exhaust manifold on there so that means that it has the one and a quarter inch primaries and the reason we want the smaller ones is because we want its volume efficiency if you think of volumetric efficiency like if you have a bigger ported head you have bigger exhaust runners you have a bigger intake all the above are going to take longer to fill that up with boost you might make more top end but you will have a little bit of loss in spool and response so we're going the other direction to keep everything reasonably sized and you should have quicker spool quicker response when you're on and off gas this will probably come back off but right now we're building a downpipe so you see we have dual turbo smart 45 hyper gates on here with everything that he has you're gonna have to kind of exit it's just gonna be tight to exit all this out the bottom nothing's gonna come out it's not a race car well it is a race car but it's not going on the track so he's not gonna have some hood exit exhaust or anything like that but we are halfway done with the downpipe. We'll show you shortly what Mark's doing. Over here, we have a HKS four inch exhaust. He's got the HKS tie, so this titanium canister, stainless mid pipe, or I guess that's the cat back area. We still have to create a mid pipe. We've also been doing stuff with the Hypertune. You see we did some plumbing, so this is the water feed to the turbo. It goes around the back of the block, comes up, feeds water here, then water returns into the water pump there. Just doing everything the way we know that it works good and it's gonna last for a long time. We made this stainless hard line for his turbo drain. It's not tight yet because we're gonna end up taking the turbo off. We gotta powder coat some stuff as well. We have an oil feed line for the turbo. Soon we're gonna build some Dash 20 Pro Plus XRP set for the upper and lower radiator hose. As you can see here, we're kind of mocking up stuff. Let me see if I can show you guys down inside. Yeah, no, we're upside down, but if you look close, you can see 
there's a cooler down there. That cooler is for his power steering. We're gonna also put a pretty large 25 row, I believe. We're gonna do an oil cooler under the headlight on this side. We're going to mount his oil filter relocation over here under this headlight kind of something like this we got to build some brackets for it. the problem with having such large intercooler piping and this is actually a pretty large filter and all these components as you start to run out of space and you got to move stuff from one side of the motor and route the plumbing to the other side we've also finished all the fuel lines and plumbing and uh, the fuel filter so dash eight all the way up to that radium filter that's a six micron filter so you can run ethanol and then it wise off and feeds both sides of the rail and then this is the return out of the middle of the rail down to that regulator and out and then you can see we have this coolant pressure sensor we have an oil pressure sensor slowly adding all the parts check out this hyper tune intake manifold so we have it blue taped on the other side so when we're working we don't scrape it made a custom throttle cable bracket but he has black with red to go with the theme of his build. Then we still have the idle air control valve under here, map sensor under here, and then we're getting ready for the vacuum line plumbing. Got that set up the other day. Another little trick we do, you take a non-turbo reservoir from let's say like an IS300 or a GS or a super non-turbo, and you can use this reservoir that'll bolt directly to the original power steering pump and then that keeps it out of the way of the Hypertune because the Hypertune's throttle body will come here and usually you have your reservoir right there on a Supra, but now you're gonna have to move the reservoir somewhere else. We do that, we paint it black and we weld the A in on it for the return. We've also done that. Lots of details going into it. We're gonna make a little bit more progress and show you guys probably how far we get later today or tomorrow or maybe even the next day and then kind of go over the details of what we're doing and why we did it. You guys can maybe use some of these ideas on your build if you're doing a 2J build, wherever you guys might be. I know I had mentioned to you before the modified water pipe, where we'll, the pipe that comes out of the back of the OEM water pump heads this way and it usually wraps around the block and then it'll feed into this port or this port feeds into it. And it also will cool the OEM oil cooler, that's a water to oil cooler. So what we do is we cut it, modify it, and make it end right here. And then we can just go in and out of the heater core this way. So it simplifies, but still lets you use the heater core. And we just buy HPS. They sell a kit. I think it ends in 157. It's HPS silicone heater core hose kit for a Supra, but we don't use all of it. We'll kind of cut and change and just use two of the hoses there. Just keep it nice and clean and simple. So we've done that as well. So we got lots of fab left to do guys. So we're gonna keep going on that and hopefully you'll see a little bit more plumbing next time we show you and some more tubing and the intake manifold should be in and yeah, get further with that. All right, that's the quick update on Ben Supra. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And if you have any questions, let me know and then we'll share a little bit more of this with you as we get further. All right guys, we fluffed up the, the mullet for you guys. Mark's gonna tell you something about welding. Show them at least what you made. It's so cool, can I burn my hand? What's the hottest part? No, that's not that hot. Check out that back purge. Beautiful downpipe. We still got a weld a O2 bung on there. My God, that's heavy. Stainless gets heavy, guys. What we're gonna do though is cut that V-band off because it doesn't really mate well with that one. We're gonna use the other end of this billet V-band. No. They don't touch. So there'll be a billet V-band there and then another billet V-band here because this is like an older version that Japanese were using. We're gonna make it slightly better because we like to improve on things and make stuff work properly. That's where we're at. Ooh, material sheet for Ben. Thought I'd show you that. Stuff goes slow when you're doing fab stuff. It takes a long time, but a little bit of an upgrade. Oh, if you guys are wondering about the sandals in the shop, as soon as May rolls around, I like to wear sandals. It's a risk I'm willing to take. Sometimes you stub your toe. If you're smart, you don't. But then your feet aren't so hot. I don't know, that's just how I do it. All right, see ya. We're back on the Red Super today. 
We made some progress. We made a mount. It's not complete yet, but the mount is for this oil filter relocation. And you can see all this intercooler tubing is done on the hot side. Plumbing is done for the CNR radiator. We did some Dash 20 plumbing on there. Came out really clean. And we got this side done. Cold side of the intercooler piping. But something that came out really good that Mark had just built was the downpipe to midpipe, check it out. Super clean. And then he's got a carbon drive shaft installed to his HKS exhaust. Ben has a really cool super. Let me lower this down, show you guys what the engine bay looks like. A little bit of changes happened in the engine bay, but like we were saying, we're just doing fab work and it's very time consuming, but we're gonna fill you in once every little step is done. I'll show you how we did it and why we did it. So on this one, we had to make it two pieces because it's so tight, you can't snake one piece in and out and still weld a air intake temp bung onto it, which we have to weld over kind of on that first 90 degree elbow there. Because that'll go somewhere on the underside of this pipe because this hole can only be so big and then we have to put a little trim around the edge of it to clean it up. Put a little rubber trim to make it look like a finished touch. Check out, we got the pulleys on there. Came out good. And then here's this upper Dash 20 XRP Pro Plus onto the rad billet upper water neck. Here's the upper view of the downpipe. It's looking really clean, slowly but surely. We had oil plumbing, power steering plumbing, a couple other things like that. It's just wiring, catch tank we gotta build. So it's like, looks like it's getting close, but still there's many days left. We got this Turbo Smart. It's the compact plumb back style one that'll go in here from Turbo Smart to Borg Warner. But yeah. I'd say this is one of the cleanest Supras we've ever built. Oh, and we do have to mount the Mac valve and do the, the boost lines. We'll probably do some hard lines that connect these two together and then soft lines from the boost reference point and from this point coming back over to the Mac valve. Hope you guys like it so far. And then I wanted to show you, we got new sunglasses that just got back in stock. Check them out. So you guys have already seen our traditional team sunglasses. The reason ones have 34 and the blue lenses. These were out of stock for a while. We got them back in stock. So we have those, but then check these out. Black sunglasses, they have the chrome lens and then the blacked out 34. So it's like another version of the team glasses, but all black silver lenses. You might want to check these out because these are new, just came out. We're gonna have them for sale at the FD rounds. All right guys, thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.